Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much for coming by the channel once again to see some more Captain Subasa Dream Team. I'm the homie Nako bringing you in this video a continuation of once again of this lengthy beginner's guide. In this portion, we will be covering boundary break, enhancing special skills, teaching special skills, skill removals. And I think that might be it. And we might finally have reached the end of this. Actually, let me look over my outline real quick. Hold up. I know I should have done that before. My bad, y'all. My bad. See, let me break skill removal, passing on skills, splittings, what to do, explain shops. I already did that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I guess explain the challenge road and other events and stuff like that. I already did the player database. So, okay, let's go then. <clears throat> okay, so we were going over, we had talked about in the previous video that I would use my main account for boundary break. And I had and I had mentioned in that video as well. Sometimes the way your team shapes up is going to be just depending on what the game gives you. Because you could pull for certain players and you might not get them. So initially... Um, I was forming a team with red Japanese players and stuff like that and then I ended up getting all this other stuff and in the end I ended up with this blue non-Japanese player base to form my final squad now previously because I got lucky enough to pull this super dream festival unit Carlos Santana and I need absolutely 100% a naturaleza of some sort now if you notice on this one okay excuse me on my alt account i had the same unit but the skill that it had was oh i don't even have it on this one the skill there is a one two skill that was flashing in red it was called nrs which is natureza rivaul santana i took it off of this unit and i gave him instead the one two skill known as brazilian dream duo because right in here i just need santana and natureza the reason why i had done that was because the way that i was shaping up the team and stuff like that i would end up taking out uh, there is a moment where I would end up taking out Rivaul and doing I don't know what and I would leave Natureza and Santana in there and I would still want them to have access to a 1-2 so I just wanted to make them dependent on just Natureza and not Natureza and Rivaul so but part of that is because I have access to that skill I meant to show that off in the last video my bad because as a beginner oh but I don't even know if they give that ticket anymore <clears throat> that's the thing I remember previously, yeah, I don't think they gave it anymore. Previously, for the beginners, you were given a ticket that would give you an, uh, a DreamFest unit selectable ticket so that you can go ahead and pull up to a certain point any DreamFest unit that you want. I think that beginner account did not have that option, but my alt does. So for my alt, I can pull the Dream Festival unit that has the Brazilian Dream Duo, use a skill removal to extract it, and pass it on to this one to use with that natureza so anyway then later on i pulled for this guy right here because in order to use this one the bond i needed two or more skill type club players and i didn't really have anything else that was usable other than a defender that was really really low in stats and this one was one of the newer ones now i got lucky and i pulled them on step three which i did not create a video for i pulled them off camera i was just uh yeah, I just didn't have the energy to set up to record to pull for this guy. And I got lucky enough to pull him in step three. So I only used up 100 and 120 Dream Balls as opposed to uh, a 220. And the reason why that matters is because although I pulled for this guy specifically, if I had not gotten him in step three, I would have pulled up to step five, which would have cost me an extra 100 Dream Balls. And if you've been following my videos or watching, <coughs> excuse me, this guy right here which is the Natureza I was pulling for. When he was first released, I did not get him. I think I only used 300 Dream Balls. The second time now that he came back and he was uh, <clears throat> put up as a rate up player, I had spent initially 400 Dream Balls and that's all I had. And then over the course of the six days that passed, uh, I was able to secure up to at least 150 Dream Balls. Some paid and some through a pack and uh with the 100 dream balls that i had i pulled and i got them so if i had to have gone those extra 100 dream balls to pull for that other green unit i wouldn't have had the chance to pull those extra 100 for this one and i wouldn't have had them so sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't 
I'm super happy that I got them. So now I get to use them here in the boundary break. So let's go ahead and proceed. But before we do, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Here we go. So boundary break, we're going to go ahead and go from here. Or actually, no, let me go through the menu, then we'll come back to here, okay? Because I want to try and provide you with multiple examples of how you can boundary break. Because it's not just completely dependent on those uh, these tamatos right here. You also get Manabu tokens right here. As you see, I have 75, but that's because, again, I've been playing this game for so many years already. And I've had so many SSRs and all this other stuff that it was easy for me to rack those up. For you as a beginner or as a returning player, you get one of those medals every time that you level up any one, any one card, any one UR card to Boundary Break 4. You get a Manabu token. The reason why the Manabu token matters is because in order to use a different card for the same character as a Boundary Break item, you have to pair it with a Manabu token let me show you so the easiest example of this will probably be this uh, misaki that i have right here so let's go with that one because i have a whole bunch of versions of this one so as you see right here these are spare copies that i have right so each one that i select will give me one boundary break level two boundary breaks level now there's a difference between this one right here and this one right here. As you see, this one is flashing with the Manabu token because it's a different card for the same character. This one is exactly the same card, so I would not need one of these. However, I would absolutely not use this card on this specific card because the purpose is that I'm trying to get a copy of two boundary break four so I could use it for a better card. So it would be pointless for me to use one that I already have a boundary break for right here like this one because then I just be wasting essentially two of these for a future better card. I'll explain right now. So like let's say then uh, <clears throat> those are two levels. If I wanted to then I could use these two right here to bring it up to four. It tells you that a player was trained. Are you sure you want to use them? Blah, blah, blah. Because some of these, when I pulled it, I think it came with a, maybe a level 10 standard skill instead of a level 1. So as you see here, those are my materials. If I want to proceed, which I do not, but that's just to show you. I will be showing you when I do the Naturesa, so don't trip. Now, let's say this one right here, too. Let's say that this one was a really, really good card. It's decent not really usable in today's meta but it's not a bad card he has some usable skills at least that you can extract including the dribble right here <clears throat> but let's say then let's say then this was a really really good card it was one of the new ones and blah 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 and you pull two copies of it and that's why you have it at boundary break uh i'm sorry you pull three cop no yeah two copies because one original two additional copies for three so you have three of these cards and let's say, okay, this was the all powerful one right now. And then you found you broke them up to level two. Now you need to bring them up to four. Okay. So your options are going to be, <coughs> if you want to use this one, you see how this time, this one does not have the Manabu token and this one does. It's not going to make sense because remember when you're using the exact same character card, it counts for one automatically without any Manabu tokens because it's the same character card. When you're using the same, a different card of the same character, a boundary break four of that card will count as two levels of boundary break for the card that you're trying to use it for when it's at boundary break four. So if I select this one, it will give me the two levels that I need to bring it up to four. You see? Okay. Now, like I said, there's various other forms. Now, in this case, <clears throat> if I go here, oh yeah, how well, we already saw how many tomatoes I had. So I had about. Well, sorry, let me show you again because we didn't really focus on it. Because my primary purpose of this video is to show you because I want to level up this guy and show you of course a variety of ways in which you can boundary break 
now in this case right here okay so I have 13 you see I have this one right here at boundary break 3 this one at boundary break 3 these when they're at boundary break 3 you can use them to boundary break one level of the current car that you're trying to use it on so when you have it at boundary break 4 that's the best time to use it usually so that you can save on two of these right here two of these right here because these are ever so valuable okay now i could wait the 12 or so days for the rank thingy for the premium rank on the dream boss to reset so that i get that selectable ticket because i know that particular unit is in this the pool to boundary break this unit to four so that i could save on one tamatsu because i have one available right there right i could do that but right now because i want to put this video out there and because i actually want to get back into playing online i don't want to wait 12 days to bring it up this time i'm gonna get a little uh desperate in a sense and maybe just save up that ticket for whenever i do need it so i don't have to waste it i'm not gonna use this dream fest one right here for another one because this one has not received a rework so who knows if in the future it does and it becomes usable otherwise <clears throat> because it's not completely necessary at the moment and Natureza is popular enough that in the future there's guaranteed to be guaranteed to be more versions of him anniversary time and all that for sure we'll get another one maybe by then through those anniversary tickets I pull another one of these I pull the new Natureza this one's no good anymore I already had a duplicate before that I used a shot for so I have a copy of the shot if I were to need it even though I'm not going to use it right now, and you'll see why. Um, so, you know, for me, it's more convenient to hold on to that unit. So if in the future, if I get lucky enough to pull another one, I could bring it up to level four, and then I use it for two levels. Okay? Well, before I get started, the other way that you can boundary break players is whenever you pull on Dream Collection or Dream Festival, you get a special shop for the dream collection or the dream festival banner that was ongoing right here the banner already ended but you get a few days to claim your uh claim your medals or tokens or whatever um based on the amount of pulls that you had every one pull for five dream balls gives you one medal so every multi that i did was giving me uh it cost me 50 dream balls and it was giving me 10. so right here i did 10 multis total for 500 dream balls if i had wanted to get this guy right here the pity system 300 that's 300 so again i spent 500 dream balls for 100 so 300 is gonna be 1500 dream balls for one player usually when you're gonna go for a pity the hope is that you pull one of the two along the way so that when you make it to the pity, you get the other one that you need. Or not that you need, but the other one from the banner, at least, right? But in some cases, and I've seen it happen through some live streams and stuff like that, where, um, <clears throat> you know, the... No, no, especially for Dream Collection. I hate the Dream Collection. I just happened to get... I got unlucky, and then I got lucky. That's how it is. But I saw, like I said, if you haven't watched Steiner, S-T-N-E-R, go check him out. He does live streams on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights in preparation for news and updates and for maintenance and stuff like that. Okay. Um, he pulled on somebody's account or something like that and all the way to the pity. Not a single one of these two came out. So he was only able to claim one. It can happen. Usually your best bet is for Super Dream Festival. When you get a three plus one, and you only need 1,150 to guarantee one as opposed to 1,500. Okay. So now, because I got lucky, because I got lucky, I get to claim one of these. This is a boundary break material that is specific to Natureza. So you cannot progress Natureza's boundary break on one level. So I'm going to claim that one for sure. Okay. Now, the other thing is, I guess you could say maybe the smart thing would be to claim a xeno because it's a free boundary break for 50 as opposed to this that you need 100 in total to claim uh tamatsu aide which is right here 
to claim one of these. You need a hundred of these. But you see right here, I'm at 67. I'm at 67. So, because I already have Mueller, I already have Genzo. I don't know if I'm gonna pull, if I'm gonna try and pull for Zeno later down the line. I don't know if maybe he comes featured and I get lucky and I pull him. I actually have some Zeno cards available already that will allow me to boundary break them to at least level three for like easy. So for my sake, for me, I'm going to claim these instead so that I could get one general Tamatsu because if I get Zeno cool, I would have that one extra one right there. But if I could already boundary break them to boundary break four with just regular cards, then I don't really, then it's just a waste. And then what if I never get a usable Xeno? On this account, I've rarely gone for Xeno. And when I have, I haven't gotten the good ones. So for me personally, I'm going to take these medals right here. <clears throat> okay, go here, take my extra Tamatsu. Okay, go back home. Now. I'm going to go ahead and show you how all of this works. Every time that you boundary break as well, there's two of them right here. You see, unlock with boundary break. So you need at least two levels to unlock their full set of skills. Well, skill slots, not skills. You unlock the skill slots. Then each level will increase stats in some way or another. Boundary break one will increase your stamina right here by 100. So he will end up with 1495 in the end. When you boundary break him to two, you get an additional 1200 across all the physical stats, speed, power, and technique. When you bring him up to boundary break three, you get an additional 1200 on the same physical stats for a total of 2400. After you bring him to boundary break four, that's when you get 1,200 across all defensive stats and 1,200 across all attack stats. So you get 1,200 here, 1,200 here, 2,400 down here across the board. And that's what's going to allow you to increase the limit break so that then you went ahead and increased by 1,000 all the desirable stats. As you see here, this is another one of those units where he has absolutely zero use for the block. So it works out perfectly in that you're going to increase all of his necessary stats. Dribble, shot, pass, tackle, intercept, speed, power, and technique. Okay. So in total, your physical stats will go up by 3,400. Your defense by 2,200. And your attack by 2,200. Okay. Let's see. Let me go ahead. Boundary break. <clears throat> Now there's the one that we just claimed. That's one. Let me show you. One level right here. <clears throat> oh, it doesn't show right here. Oh yeah. It shows you the increase, right? Remember you said 1495. Two levels. Yes. Well, oh, I was already on the stats. Hello. You see this went up right here. It doesn't show you 1200 on this screen, but trust me when I'm telling you, it's 1200. Okay. Uh, I guess we could do them one at a time if you want to see. Let's see. Okay, let's do one at a time. Okay. Oh well, this one's the most obvious, the 1495. And sometimes you want to make sure. You check on the skills first before you use up a unit to see if there's anything on here that could be usable. Nothing right here, so who cares? We'll go ahead and use that. We'll go ahead and do that. You see the Manabu token right there that was necessary because I am using one of those cards, right? Okay. Now my two skill slots are unlocked right here. I have an additional ability limit break that opened up. So now let's do that on the pass and technique for now. 2,500 right there. So the remaining will be 2,500. So it is 10,000 in total of those ability limit break items that you need. Okay. 10,000 total. Now I have 14 here. 
And like I said, I want to save this one. And then the thing with this one too is that this one has an exclusive volley. I don't want to use them. I have them in use right now, but even then if I didn't, I would not free him up so that I could use them. So I'm going to go ahead and bite the bullet here and use two. But that's fine because at least I only use two. Well, let's do one at a time. Only two as opposed to four if I wouldn't have had one, the unit, and two pulled enough to, I guess, claim a metal from the shop. So I guess it's kind of a good thing that I pulled uh, at least enough for the metals. Okay, so this is the next one right here. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. See right here the 1200? Okay. 1200 right there. 1200. We'll do one more. Here we go. Boundary break level three. And you, of course, you don't have to do this one at a time. You can level it up all the way to. Uh, I'll, wait, I'll wait for that. To boundary break four. Twenty-four. You don't have to do it one at a time. You could do it all the way, right? I just wanted to show you so you could see the difference and in the increase every time that you bring it up. Then after you do this, because we're gonna be a boundary break four, now it's gonna give us a mana token. Okay, let's there you go. And the Manabu token will allow you, like I said, to be able to do boundary break with those duplicate cards that have to be at minimum boundary break level three so that you can use them as a material. Okay. Okay, so you see we added 1,000 right there, 1,000 right here. So all of these are a plus 1,000. Plus. Plus. All the increases, there you go. You saw little by little how much the stats increase. I didn't make note of it at the beginning to tell you. Look, we started off, I remember, I think we started off at like 13,000 across the board. Now we're at 15 or so. And this was also a little bit lower, of course, obviously. And these are pretty good stats. What make this particular unit dangerous is that he has uh he was the first one to get this passive skill right here when facing multiple opponents in an attack matchup the number of much matchup opponents is reduced to one furthermore players removed due to the effect of avert crisis are stunned max two times you said at halftime at the beginning of the first half of overtime so essentially when i created a gameplay video since i'll have two players that have this passive you'll see how now it's a lot less bothersome to go up against and get crowded by multiple opponents for a little while it was getting a little difficult because the players are getting faster and faster and faster and they move across the pitch like really quick and sometimes you get a caught off guard or something like that and you enter bad matches with two or three players and it's really difficult so this is kind of like i guess cheating if you will but i mean it is what it is i've had to face it and i've overcome it but it also helps that i have players to help me so i'm fortunate i have a rather relatively good team okay but you know i've been playing for a long time and if you see my pulls well i've just gotten lucky on some occasions even when i pulled that santana and when i got michael michael was an unexpected surprise and then so was santana they were both like what what because michael was not rate up and then santana came out there like Poof, it popped and i was like oh what no way you know so anyway and then this guy when he wins explaining some of these hidden abilities Oh. oh no, I did highlight that in the last video. How some of the hidden abilities unlock and blah blah blah. So you see everybody's gonna have something different, of course, right? Tenacity. Again, we covered that in the last video. This one though, you see, when you win a matchup, your stats increase plus 15%. So this will make them stronger right here once you win a matchup, which makes it which is facilitated by avert crisis facilitated by over crisis but even if you win the matchup defensively then your stats already increased so now that you've recovered the ball whoever's trying to stop you is going to have an even harder time because you've increased your stats by 15 percent okay and i think that when it says up to one time that doesn't mean that you only receive the stat increase one time that just means that you can only increase it 
one time per possession. So like, let's say you have the ball and then you go into a matchup and you win, but you're still like, let's say you start from behind half, half uh, the middle, the midfield, and then you're moving the ball up and then you win one matchup, 15% stats. Then the next matchup, you win it again. You do not get another 50% increase. That's what it means. But let's say you increase the 15%, you lost the ball or you didn't score in the goalkeeper, whatever. Possession change. After that, you get the ball back. You give him the ball, you win a matchup, 15% increase once again in the same half. All that matters is one time per possession of the ball. Okay, keep that in mind. So, and then of course, dribble range enhanced here so you could reach uh, across the pitch a lot faster and this one so that it makes it a lot easier to not have to worry about your skills making you one dimensional so this is a very good unit and i really 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 wanted him and i got lucky that i got him so okay now i think that just about covers boundary break let's go now we need to show you uh teaching special skills enhancing special skills and um skill removal but again you could go to the home page go to the uh, player screen there's the option to enhance players and stuff like that i'm not going to do that this time i'm going to go straight to the one that i want to enhance go right here <coughs> excuse me enhance special skills so check this out every time you enhance a card or a skill i should say from level one it costs a lot less in coins well yeah there's another thing you need coins for enhancing the skills right here it cost me 300 300 but when you level up a skill that starts at 10. three thousand from 300 to 3000 so think of it as whatever level this starts off at you're adding a zero to the cost in terms of uh mm, nah forget that just keep in mind that what matters is that if this skill is higher when you start leveling it up it's gonna cost you more coin that's important to know when you're a beginner because if you pull you decide to pull on a player and then the player rate up is like oh we give them to you with enhanced special skills at level 10 and you're like oh cool you know i spent some time and i've accumulated a bunch of these but you don't have enough coin look it's gonna cost me 267 but as you complete events and stuff like that you're gonna cost come across times where you get these that are plus 20 you're gonna get some of those plus 10s you see this one was from christmas plus 25 you know, of course, I just have so many of them because, well, I've been playing the game for a minute. So, it's going to cost me a lot less to do this. Because, you see, it's still 3,000 regardless of which one I use. It's just 3,000 per material, not 3,000 per level increase or anything like that, okay? So, if you want to save on your coin, you can do it this way. So if I want to add, uh, oh yeah, I could do two more 25s, I believe, right? And then if I do, uh, well, I mean, I guess I could do another one. Uh, nah, but then that's too many. I would go over, but at the same time, <clears throat> well, I guess it depends on you how much you care about your coin or not. I don't think there's a 15. There's only 5, 20, 10, 25, or 30. So I guess we'll do a... We'll do a 10. Uh, we'll do a 10. And then we'll do a... Ah, screw it. Let's just do a 5. Because <clears throat> then it's going to end up costing me more coins just to say one stinking level. All right, so 15,000, okay? Here we go. We're going to enhance some. There we go. Level 99. This is his newest dribble, his best dribble, 520. A lot of skills nowadays are coming up to the 500 or so range. 
475 and above 460 and above 450 and above something like that okay now if you ever want to see the momentum of a skill you could hold on to it right there then click on level max status right here and it'll show you 490 is the total i think for this particular unit i am going to keep nrs on because um i could have done the same for this one but now the way that i've been playing the game i have decided to keep uh what's it called based on like my substitutions and stuff like that i'm actually keeping in ribaul because he's a necessary piece for my subasa because since i don't have a good misaki or i don't have uh the dream fest roberto i think those are the only two that he has one two skills with right now he doesn't have a solo one he only had that the only other one he has is with ribaul right here so what I've noticed is that when I came across a Subasa online, when the player did not have a 1-2, and they got to a point where, like, let's say, for example, I left their forwards off sides, and they're just trying to attack me with their Subasa, and they actually come across a bad matchup, and they don't have a 1-2 skill, and they're going to try and dribble over me, it's a little bit easier to guess, and it's a easier, little easier to lose the ball if you don't have access to both a dribble and a one two so because of that i have to 100 percent keep in rivaul even if i do decide to take off Naturesa or decide to take off santana both of them together right because now i won't be able to i can't take off uh natureza and leave santana in there by himself because he's going to be useless useless and i can't take off natureza off I mean Santana off without taking off Natureza because I'm going to make him dependent. Natureza is capable of being independent. However, his 1-2 skill that requires no other players is not as strong. And the other two that he has access to, one of them is with Subasa, but I only have access to the A rank. Somebody I saw had access to the S rank. I don't know how you get that one. Um... I don't feel like looking through the player database. Maybe it was given off as like an online reward or something like that. I don't recall. Uh, the other one would be the Brazilian Dream Duo. But that skill, from what I recall, was exclusive. Oh, no. You know what? Wait. No. I think I have access to it as well. But NRS is stronger than Brazilian Dream Duo. 475 while well, this one goes up to 490 so i might consider changing this one back to nrs instead of brazilian dream duo and this guy had access to nrs as well but if in the second half i'm gonna make this uh, some changes and take off natureza and uh santana to bring in uh schneider and levin and stuff like that depending on the goalkeeper that i'm facing then I, I need Rivaul to still have access to a 1-2. So I also have him with a new golden duo. Because he's going to be in there with Subasa. So yes, I'd much rather have a 475 1-2 that I will have access to in both halves. Than to have a 490 skill with only a 15 skill momentum higher. Even though it might be a lot more beneficial. I don't want to have that because again, Rivaul and Subasa will remain in there permanently. Where Natureza and Santana will be dependent on the flow of the game. How, how much stamina I have left. How badly do I still need both of them in the game, depending on the goalkeeper that I'm facing? Okay, and the situation that I'm in. So it's really dependent, but as it is now, NRS would only be beneficial to me on both Natureza and Santana. So I'm probably going to do that. To a certain extent, I kind of wanted to keep Carlos Santana with the Brazilian Dream Duo just because he already has the combination skill force right here increase. But hello. 490 plus 10% is obviously going to be better than 475 plus 10%, right? So, because of the way that things have panned out compared to how I was initially forming the team, then I'll probably do that. As a matter of fact, I'll do that right now since I'm going to explain also skill removals and stuff like that, okay? So now, you could do skill removals from the main menu or, like in this case, though I know that the skills that I want belong to a different uh, natureza so i'm gonna go here and then i could i'm not gonna skill remove from this particular one but let me show you how it works you can go to the card and you click on whatever skill you want to take off and it'll come off like this okay you see here i have 15 in total it always costs you just one to remove one okay 
but the one that I want to remove comes from a different natureza. So I'm going to go to teach skills, go to the free slot, find the natureza that I know has the skill that I want. And then remove it from there. So in this case, I know it's coming from some of these guys. Hold on. Let me see. What do I need? You saw that how I held on to the I held on to the character's face, right? I hold on to the face and it takes me to that card and I could do the same thing here. See, so those are all shortcuts so that you could boom, 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 quality of life stuff so that you're not always having to go to the main menu, go to train, main menu, skill removal, main menu, teach special skills, main menu. No, 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 no. You could all do all those shortcuts. Take advantage of the shortcuts. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. The skills. As you see, look, whoops, my bad, my bad. The new natureza, there are 15 across the board, right? Okay, dude. 15 across the board. 15 and 15 right here. And there's this one, well, the power was still pretty good. This one was not bad. Not bad. This one allowed me to stand up to Michael and stuff like that. Look, I'm going on a tangent again. Anyways, it wasn't bad, okay? But I wanted the new one and I got him, so whatever. Now. I think I want to arm him with the flying drive overhead kick, but I could take him away from another one. Oh, the pop up feet I need. The Brazilian Dream Duo, I'm going to keep it there. Wonder Defense and Lightning Interception. Okay. I think from here, I just need the pop up feet. Okay. Let's see if that's true. So, I'm going to take away the pop up feet from here. What's the strongest pass that comes from an exclusive raid? that when the exclusive rate is first released it's only available for a limited time but later on down the road they usually usually bring it back some of them they may permanent but they make you wait a little bit okay so now the other stuff that i needed because this shot right here i'm gonna pass it on to this one right now i only have one copy of this one right here they haven't reworked him right here. So I'm taking the risk and the chance of when I use up this card, that if they rework him, if they make him good, and I don't have another copy, then I missed out. Okay. The other card had lightning interception. I think I need it here, right? Yeah, I need it here. So I'm going to leave the lightning interception over there on this one because i'm gonna consume this card so i'd much rather take it off from here uh i'm trying to remember what else i need so we'll see right now okay so i'm gonna skill remove from here lightning interception ah uh, i'm gonna be upset if i had already removed it before and oh i should have checked okay well we'll see so right here, aside from all the character cards, well, not go where do all those skills go? Okay, well, you just keep going down, and then you start seeing the skills right here. See this one I extracted before, 0.99 for bound dribble. Natureza counter right there. That's the shot of the Dream Festival unit that I did not want to get rid of. There's a pop up feed, which I'm going to feed him. Uh, please don't tell me that I already had another lightning interception up here. Okay, only one. Cool. So you see, New Brazil football only 405. 405. It does not require any other player, but I don't want to use it my 405. And the Natureza counter is a good shot, but for Metal Phantom is a lot better. And the blow away effect to me, it's a lot more beneficial. <clears throat> okay, a lot more beneficial. Any shot. My tip to you: try to get players with shots that have the blow away effect. Those usually feel, I feel, have a little extra RNG sprinkled into them that sends goalkeepers flying a lot. That Santana stands up to that Genzo rather well. Even though a lot of times it shows that Genzo has a higher probability of stopping the shot, a lot of times Santana sends them blowing flying away. So, blow away shots when you can. Get them, get them, get them. Alright, so now. We're going to teach the lightning interception that we extracted. Here you go. You should cost 100,000 coins to be able to teach the skill. Okay. So, yes, you do need coins. Now, we're going to give him the pop-up fee that we had extracted as well. Right here. 
I'm not going to use the Naturesa counter because like I said, I prefer to go on the Full Metal Phantom to have that blow away effect. Mm. I don't care for A skills anymore. So this Miracle Dribble A, I don't care for, so... Okay, you're gonna see, I'm gonna use this one right here. A player with another hand special skill is select. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. It's just saying that because I had that A dribble skill on there, so letting you know, hey, before you use this guy, remember there's another skill on him. You sure you wanna use him or not? We already checked the skill, it doesn't matter. So yes, I'm gonna begin teaching right here. And it tells you, Special skill to be forgotten, obviously nothing. Special skill to be learned. And then when you use it, this one is bye-bye, bye-bye. It will be gone from my inventory. But because it's such a necessary shot, as you can see, 545. I forget not to that counters at like 510 or 500, but it does not have the blow away effect. And I want that because it gives me a higher chance to score, I believe. Okay, there we go. And then every time you every time you consume an S a UR card, you get golden medals right here, 30 and silver medals. What just 10? Huh. That's funny. Anyway, these are a little useless to me now. I'll still show you, I guess, at some point, like what they mean or blah blah blah. We'll get to that. Okay. So I'm gonna show you now when I go here, that card is no longer there. That card is gone. I no longer owns it. I no longer has it. So it's all good. Let's see. I think this one might have the flying drive over here click as well. It does. Okay. And extract it, I think, from there. Yeah, because I don't think I want another shot. But do I want yeah because in the end well the <clears throat> the high ball works the high ball is the only other one so yeah let's do that I'm going to give him the flying drive overhead shot now if you saw as I mentioned at the very beginning the very first video that flying drive overhead shot that you could take from the very beginning of the game the very first unit that you have an option to select from those cards they uh that skill i mentioned that it's still usable to this day to this day they have given him several at least three or four different volley shots animation skills whatever but to this day he has one overhead shot and one overhead shot only and it's at least strong still strong enough to score goals with so you know it's still uh it's still valuable it's still valuable it's still valuable okay so now i have my squad set up my player set up at least what i can do now is uh, you can arrange now the order of your skills for me also oh yeah so this gear up here on the corner you click on that this shortcut that you see here you're gonna want to enable this because what this means is that nowadays when you're playing and you're on the field when you have the ball now there's a shortcut button that appears so that you can unleash the special skill shot right away as opposed to how it was before where you had to be super fast to first click on the special shot button to bring up your special shot selection which you can still do in case you have two shots equipped on your character and I'll show you where but you know sometimes by the time you did that if you weren't fast enough you get into another matchup and you wouldn't be able to get off a shot but now thanks to this there's times where you have that like little tiny bit of separation from you and the player from entering a matchup like let's say in the in the penalty area and then when you trap the ball and you bring it down and then split seconds as soon as the screen pops out boom you click on the shortcut and you get the shot off as opposed to before if you like i said you're not fast enough that defender catches up to you now you're in a situation where rng could take over and take away the ball from you or you might lose the matchup straight up so you know the shortcut really made things interesting and more fast paced so 
the way that I like to do it is depending on what do I have as the main skill. So I have uh, the dribble first, so now I'm gonna line it up with passes, and then uh, based on momentum. So no, I think well NRS should remain there because those are for me to advance. Pop up feed will go up here. As you saw, I dragged it. You can drag it or you can click on it and then click on the one that you want to swap with. Right here. See, so whatever you want. Here's an offensive skill, so I'll leave it here. And lightning interception takes up less stamina, so I'll leave that one first. Okay, so that's how I want to set up my character. And let's make sure then you see we just go back again to enhance. I saw that I didn't have all my special skills at 99. Oh, but you know what? Ah, uh, well, that doesn't matter. I forgot that I happen to have from this thingy right here. Before time runs out. Oh, no, it wasn't from here. It was from here. Mm. Where you at, Naturesa? Keep in mind that this is from the current event that's going on right now. This is not something that's always readily available. I'm just taking advantage of the fact that since uh, I have, since I'm making this video right now, well, I'm always, even though I have a, a ton of, 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 ton of UR balls or SSR balls, I should say, to enhance them, I still get like that, all right? I still like to, you know, save for whatever reason. But look at that. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> that's right so if you have a skill and you're gonna enhance it if another player has a skill of the same name meaning it's exactly the same skill just being used by a different player you can use that to enhance the skill as well I would not recommend you do that anymore okay because right now these two NRS's right here are exclusive for those characters to certain cards so it would be silly of me especially considering how many of these i got 2688 good lord okay so considering all that don't you know i would not recommend that you use the skill unless it's one of those like there's some events where they give you a whole bunch of skills that are exactly the same and you're doing it every day you could do that ta -ta 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 -ta. But I think nowadays you probably get more than enough SSR balls that you should rarely have to worry about it, I think. Okay, so let's go. Let's use up the ones we just got right here. We we'll use the specific ones as well. Let's clear up some. Oh, no, I don't have any more singles of that. Let's clear up some inventory here. Oh. Okay, and then when this levels up, you don't have to wait for it to go one by one. Just go ahead and click on the screen anywhere. Okay, okay. Go to the next one. Okay, tackle is the last one we got to go. So let's do this. Okay. Why not? Why not? Okay. Now I have everything leveled up. I have my team ready to go. Ready to go. 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 Ready to go. What's up? Look at that. Look at that. So, um, a couple of things. You know, right here, these are my oldest players. Pepe right here, he's not that old, per se. This one was released on one of the next dream transfers. Next dream transfers okay next dream is an original story for the series written for the game and with that come additional players that appear in exclusive transfers for next dream characters i did not cover that in the transfers videos because there was no next dream banner available at the time maybe when it comes through when i make an analysis or something where well, you get to see that okay Usually there's going to be some rate up players and then all the old and past next dream characters are in the pool as well So you could possibly pull a lucky one here or there uh, Pepe was A part of the banner when I pulled from however, I got him luckily With 15 dream balls by going through the paid step-ups 
and I got him in the 15, I'm sorry, the 50% chance one at 50 dream, I'm sorry, 15 dream balls on step four. Then I got greedy and I spent the next 15 to see if I could get Victorino at step five and I didn't get him, but it's all right. I got Pepe. Pepe is not the strongest character there is per se. Right now, he's probably far behind on the meta. Okay, however, wait, this one increases what? Oh no, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna have to change that or something because that's not very beneficial for my. No, not beneficial to me at all. Let's change this. Let's change this. Uh, how do I wanna do this? Okay, we'll do three, two, four, one. Oh yeah, and I didn't really cover formations and all of that stuff, right? <sighs> like I said, there's a whole lot of stuff. And the thing is that a lot of these formations, okay, let's do that now. So formations, a lot of these gold ones, silver ones and stuff like that, you're gonna get them through events that you're gonna be having to farm. One of the events that's available right now has some formations in it. A lot of these other ones too, some of them can be purchased, I think through the, through the shops. But all you're gonna get from that is standard formations but at least it will provide you with variety in the type of teams that you can make i think some of them are unlocked as well through completing the story and i think that's it because yeah you want to start doing whatever you can to later on unlock more formations so let me show you let's reset let's do standard all of these standard ones have no effect I think a lot of these are unlocked. I'm telling you, I think through the story, maybe through the shop, and uh, I don't remember, honestly. You're gonna have to figure this one out on your own, unfortunately, for these standard ones, because I don't remember if it's through the story and, and whatever. But for sure, for sure, silver and gold and all that stuff come through events, through events. And a lot of these are recycled often much to my dismay but to your uh but to your benefit of course um well moving the mic too much my bad my bad you know because they're uh, what's it called I'm trying to do my bad. I'm trying to do this. I'll be weak defensively on that side, I think. So I need to do this. Okay. Okay. So three, two, four, one is what I'm going for on this one, as opposed to the three, two, three formation that I had, because that three, two, three formation. Oh, uh, but then I want it for this guy, huh? It's okay. I'm gonna try it out this way. The 3-2-3 three, three formation that I had was boosting uh, physical to Japanese and European players. Which I actually have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 Japanese and European players as opposed to only 4 Brazilian players. Wow. Huh. Huh. Alright. Well, I'll see what works best for me. The 3-2-4-1 or 3-2-3-2 three, two, three, two formation. This is one that I enjoy using a lot, actually, at 3241. So, most likely, I'm going to keep it at that. But, okay, so I got sidetracked, right? So, this Pepe right here, the main thing with that is that as you start, you know, shaping up your team and stuff like that, what you're looking for in team formation is that you have to establish a base. The base is going to be for team skills, the team skill slots. What I am running with right now. Is with five or more agility type non-Japanese players, all stats plus 25%. As of right now, February 18th, I believe I, we said it was, right? Yes. As of this time, 25% increase through team skill is the highest. Over time, they have increased it little by little. Sometimes it's been a 5% jump. Sometimes it's been just a little bit. The last time was at 20%, then it went up to 21, 22, and 23 consecutively, you know, 23 being the highest, 
now they raised it up to 25 percent but it actually has gone through i think two different anniversaries where it has not gone up beyond the 25 so hopefully they keep it there so that they don't have to force us to then pull for team skills as well and uh yeah so you have to establish your base now do you get to pick that base obviously not you're gonna have to wait to see what kind of players you pull through these banners because even then when you wait to the anniversary remember even when you do those five steps if you go back if you want to and see some of the five steps that i pulled all through december sometimes i got what i wanted sometimes i didn't get what i wanted and for the most part the one that pains me a lot is that i really wanted the blue version of this particular card right here Schwell, Schwell, Schwell Tiger Brown. I really wanted him because I could form a totally different squad if I had this guy in blue. Totally different squad if I had the blue updated one. So I'm hoping now that I even drained all my dream balls just to get this one guy right here. But even then, this guy right here allowed me to play this guy right here that I thought I wasn't going to get to play. And even though he may not be the strongest of cards, and this one too might not be the strongest of cards, there's a lot of benefits to me using them. For example, right here, I'm at a decent bond right here, 58%. Thanks to that one Matsuyama, I have 20% auto intercept chance for all of my team. Thanks to that uh, shark boy down there, the red defender that I showed you, I have 70%. Now that's a little deceiving, but it's good for me. 50% comes from Pepe. Excuse me. As I mentioned, he's kind of old in a way because I pulled him back in there uh, November, October, something like that, right? So he's old. In terms of like the stats, he falls behind a little bit. But, I mean, his passive gives him a 30% increase against, I think, both type of midfielders, attacking and defensive midfielders. So, you know, there's that. He gets an opportunity to kind of face up with some of these. There was a defender and... Oh, I'll check right now. Anyway, the primary purpose of having him on here is this thing right here where he gives 50% decrease to auto-intercept in hands to defenders. The reason why this one is valuable is because he gives 20% enhance, I'm sorry, active, uh, chance of activation, decrease, decreased chance of activation of the opponent's team skills, opponent, the entire squad, 20% less chance to activate auto intercept. So if my opponent has somebody like this guy that gives a 20% increase to all the team, this guy nullifies it off the bat. And even if this guy is not the strongest of characters with the side master, whenever he's in side master, he's all right. Kind of holds his own sometimes when he's not in side master. Usually a lot of people pass through him unless the orange RNG gods or whatever assist me when that doesn't happen. At least he has this price of confused five, which means minus 8% to stats when your matchup opponent selects the next command after you lose at matchup. So if you're going to get to my goalkeeper by getting past this guy, you're going to get debuffed along the way. If you try and get past this guy, he has something similar. Except this one does 5% to special skill force when matchup opponent uses the next special skill after you lose that matchup. So you're going to get debuffed in two ways. And not just that. Let me put this guy right here. This guy, same thing. Minus 7% to special skill force. So... I don't know if this guy, like let's say right here, because this one is minus 8% to stats. I don't know if that gets neglected. I'm sorry, not neglected, but nullified by if they have stat handicap resistance. If they have stat handicap resistance, then they might resist this guy's debuff. But as of this time, there is absolutely no way that I know of to resist a 5% skill uh, drop to special skill force force i don't know if that counts the same for shield where the shield only blocks against re reduction in stats or does it also block against reduction in force i'm not sure i don't know that anybody's tested it i haven't tested it so i don't know so um yeah so that's pretty much how i have my squad with a little bit of auto intercept in hands for me a lot of auto intercept reduction for my opponent because that's what i like to do i like to pass over 
players. And the problem is that for the most part, for the most part, your defenders have to have some way of auto intercepting so that you don't get passed easily. 70% right here. This guy, 80% right there. This guy, 60% right there. But if I face off against an opponent that were to have my same team, which I usually put it to the test right here by clicking on versus, which just kind of lets me run a little simulation against myself and blah, 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 using my teams that I've set up. All of these guys right here, except for this one. This one is nullified, 70% chance. I have the 70% reduction to defenders. So I'm not worried about his auto intercept. This guy's at 60%, so he's nullified. This guy only has 10% chance. So I'm willing to take risks there if I can. And the thing is that I particularly do enjoy sending passes, white passes even, and I'll have to explain that when I create a gameplay video over defenders and stuff like that. And I felt that when auto intercept was introduced and stuff like that, it really debilitated my uh, way of playing the game. My, not to say that my skill set or whatever was up on par with like man the ones that play the dream championship my my hats off to them because they play like wow they play really really crazy of course there were some mistakes made here and there we all make them is the heat of the moment you know we get a little nervous or whatever i made some mistakes as well that's i mean i'm at that third level but you know i'm just saying we all make mistakes my bad that's all i'm saying and the thing is that um you know it helps me I can possibly improve here. The only thing is that at the same time, well, in a, to a certain extent, that's funny that I kind of, even though I want to play Pepe, I'm kind of forced to play Pepe because even though I'm using the blue non-JP uh, base, I'm limited on defenders and stuff like that that I can use. So I'm almost forced to use this guy and use this guy means I need to have two agility type club players and that means if i had a japanese player which i do in hyuga but i don't want to use them i could use a japanese player instead of this one however then i won't meet the requirement for five non-japanese players right here so keep that in mind that you have to find characters when you're pulling and you're creating your team there's a lot of things to consider tamatsu i this to boundary break them skills also you need other character cards you could also buy skills from the shop but that costs you dream balls and the and the car and the skills in the shop are not always the strongest versions of those skills for example for natureza there's a raid where you could get at least a decent semi-decent drive pass that's what the name of the skill it's a passing shot and it's called drive pass but if you go to the shop and you spend about 20 or 10 or 15 dream balls or whatever you get the back heel pass s and that one is too low you'll get the the ball stolen almost most of the time so it's not even worth buying with dream ball so don't do it don't do it don't do it some skills will be necessary there's some useful uh, skills in there trust this pepe the only way that i will have access to that agility the agile sliding tackle right there was through the shop otherwise i would have been stuck with just an a tackle and everybody would be dribbling over me like all the time and i didn't want that oh why do i have the one two scale all the way at the bottom anyway um yeah so you know this pepe right here okay so attacking and defensive midfielder so you see that 30 percent increase makes them usable but this is the best thing about them right here this is useless for me now because i don't have any club players that i'm using at least not at this time but you know you have to wait to see as you get players check for hidden skills and then once you start f taking shape and players start coming out and stuff like that and you start looking at the holes in your team like okay why well, need to increase here i need to increase there i need this player just for the team skill i need this player uh to fill up this gap right here that i'm missing a, a defensive midfielder i'm missing this like for a long time and i feel i feel like this is still the case for me i'm limited in defenders i have tons of attacking midfielders tons of forwards and stuff like that but my defenders are mm, but at least these two defenders are good enough well three but this one's the best defender i have this one on the field at least right now is the second best and this one is my weakest link but at least there's some uses to him that allow me to keep him on there okay then when i make some substitutions i would end up bringing this guy 
So let me show you that as well. Things to keep in mind when you're team building, okay? There was a time where like, let's say for example, let me show you some of the things that you can do, okay? There was a time that what I was doing was, uh, okay, so I was doing this, and I was bring in this guy right here, and this guy right here, and then I lost my blue agility type guys right there, right? But now I have five or more skill types, five or more skill types, and five or more skill types right there. See? So during the second half, I'd be able to make three adjustments there. This one is still kind of decently usable. Not up to where he should be or I wish he was, but at least he's guaranteed a 20% boost through that or through this. And the fact that he has this makes him, you know, kind of valuable. He's better in a matchup situation than uh, just on the field. And he kind of increases the German players by 1%. So, you know, he's a decent cone player to have. You can always take advantage of him or abuse the fact that he's on the field or anything like that. So you're okay, at least with this particular card at this particular point in time. Okay, and I only did that to kind of show you guys, you know, the kind of stuff that can be done. Now, there was another time too where I was like, okay, uh, let's say my goalkeeper got drained. So now I did one, two, three subs right there. And I was going to do... I'm not gonna think about it too hard right now, okay? I'm gonna let you see, but then I get to show you different stuff, huh? All right, let's go back to how I was. Let's go back to how I was to see if I figure out how was it that I did it. No, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. because if I do, if I wanted to bring in this guy, okay. So like, let's say if I needed to change my uh. Did three subs there that would be four that would be five no nah, i don't want to think about that too much if i needed to use my goalkeeper i could bring in this guy right here that would be four subs because in the game you are allowed up to five substitutions not three five substitutions that would be four and then this would be my five right here and then i would still have everything activated right there be at 55% stats up, 25% auto intercept. But this one has that only for AM and D on uh AM and DM players, right? Yeah, so attacking midfielders and defensive midfielders, all right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, I have seven green players in there. Seven. See, so there's other ways that you could toy with it and whatever. It doesn't have to be limited to five green players or five blue players or five blah 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 blah. The situation could call for different things. If I had chosen to do, uh, trying to think of something else that I could have done, because I know that there was another way that I was doing these substitutions. I'm pretty sure. I think so. Watch, check it out. Check it out. I'll check it out. So we do this guy. I'm gonna do this guy right here. I'm gonna do this guy back here. This guy back here. I think the way that I had done this was one, two, three. Oh, depending. Depending. So that's one, two, three subs. If I'm going to keep this goalkeeper here, and this one will go here. Oh no, because I only have one, two, three, four. I have one, two, three, four. Oh no, 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 no. 
Okay, my bad. I guess I would have to sub out my goalkeeper over here and here. No? <gasps> no, that's not right. Okay, well, look, I'm already spending too much time on this. My bad. I'm going to have to cut this part out of the video because I didn't do it right, okay? Okay, so here in this part, you know, there's a bunch of different, uh, there's a few different ways that I can do this. I was trying to think about how to do it, but I think I'm making my head hurt right now. Well, no, not really, but I do want to get these videos up. I see that I'm already at an hour 10 into this already. My goodness. Okay, so let me make sure I covered everything. Boundary break. Ability limit break again. We did the um, limit breaking, a uh, boundary breaking and all that stuff. Different ways to do it. Okay, I guess let me show you a little bit of some of the shops, right? Because you know how I enhance skills and all this stuff and whatever. So when you go to the shop... <clears throat> you're always gonna this one is every day free pack every day you get a dream by every day always remember to make sure you collect it make sure you collect it this one is only here right now because of the event um this one the one that i always purchase it costs you six dollars now six dollars i don't think it's seven i think it's 5.99 you get 155 dream balls over the course of 30 days. So every day you're logging in and you're getting five. The beauty of getting all of that as opposed to getting all of it all together is that sometimes like right now, you know, I needed dream balls to collect uh, for the dream collection. Right. And I was like, all right, cool. I was calculating. I was going to get and I was calculating based on the amount of dream balls that I was getting through each day so that I knew, OK, when I'm going to be able to pull, am I going to have enough? And, blah, blah, blah. and I did. Now that that's over, boom, you know, because it's still ongoing. Well, I'm still increasing my dream ball collection or gathering every day by five extra, right? And right now that I'm not having to pour, not wanting to pour on anything, that's good for me because then my dream balls are going up 10 a day as opposed to just five a day from the free, uh, from the dailies, okay? Then we have the dream collection, which I already went over. This one, which was from a previous uh, Valentine's event that I already passed. So I'll go ahead and claim stuff for it. You know what? Let me just do that now. What I actually need are some of these. So I'll claim these. And then I'll claim these as well. You know what? I think I'm going to claim an infinite amount of these because as we saw, we have so many of these already. I don't really need that many. I don't really need that many. But what I do need for sure are these because I've been kind of running out. Oh, Last time they gave us a limit, this time they did not. And this time they did not. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Okay. So then. Well, I'll see later because I got to see how many I got of these and these and these in case of the hidden ability getting affected. So I'll check it out after this video. Oh, yeah. So the coins, you see? Oh, look, there you go. There's one. Four, two, three, one. That's a formation. You need. 10 bronze medals these bronze medals from the regular medals you get them when you tell when every time you sell i think it has to be at least an r card i don't think you get them for n cards you get r cards sr cards will give you silver ones r cards will give you bronze ones and when you get an ssr chess player like from the events and stuff that you're clearing i'll show you which ones when you sell those you get bronze medals okay you see look at that i get so many of these but very few of these because i don't deal with a lot of those chess players or or, or n cards or r cards anymore so it's going to be very hard for me to get these but i've already bought a whole bunch of this stuff already but look i don't even have enough to claim some coins which i don't really need but you know you will need these maybe not this many but you will need some of these for whenever these pop out as you see right here, item update, 16 minutes left. Never, ever use a Dream Ball to update now. Ever. For any of these, for nothing. Don't waste your Dream Ball like that. Don't do it. Don't do it. All this means, because this updates every two hours. Every two hours. So in 16 minutes, this will change and this will update to be new items. But keep in mind, even though this says 15 minutes left, 
let's say i'm like okay and i leave oh no what i think they changed that so no it's not like that anymore i think automatically it's every two hours back in the day it used to be that if you left the menu and then the regular mod the regular medals were set to reset if you did not come back in they would not reset the reset counter would start oh but it didn't because i came into it right and it's a 16 minutes left no but i had already started the counter because it doesn't make sense look it's 6 39 p.m for me right now it says 15 minutes left so you're telling me this is gonna end at 6 55 instead of like 7 you know so i think it's a little off i want to say that it's probably like that so like let's say after the 15 minutes are done if i leave the item update for the two hours will not start until i start the timer by clicking on the regular medals so if in 15 minutes passes i didn't come back to make it reset it's not gonna be like two hours from now like oh you know what let me go and check it it's just gonna restart from then and then you're gonna have to wait two hours for the next reset to become available not for it to reset automatically if i remember correctly but you know what i probably shouldn't be making a big deal out of it because you're probably not gonna need much of it except for the fact that sometimes you could get some additional skills right here that could help you along the way while you're looking for other skills not every gentile has the strongest interception this is not the strongest interception but at the very least it's a decent usable ssr s rank skill that can hold you over for the time being okay so there's that coin medals <clears throat> This one is always 24 hours. If you notice here, you get one reset for free. This applies to all of these right here. So if you have coins and like, let's say you claim, I'm gonna claim these right now. All right, it's my understanding that if I was like, okay, you know, cause maybe, I don't think you're gonna really use up coins right here. Cause it's way too many coins for just like, oh, it comes with 50 on these i guess a hundred thousand oh i guess i mean i have a lot of coins so i guess if i needed to i guess two hundred thousand all right i guess well for the sake of the video okay let's say i guess i'm gonna do one of each okay sold out i'm gonna go to items whatever reset All right, look, I can't even use Dream Balls to reset it again. So you get one per every 24 hours. 24 hours starts at your reset time. For me, it is 4 p.m. at this present time. See, there they are again. Boom, boom, boom. I'm not going to buy them because I don't want to. But, you know, I normally just do this. Oops, sorry. That's why I had so many uh, skip tickets on my alt as well. Aside from the gifts that we were getting, every day I was going in here buying one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these. Because at the time, well, I didn't have that much use for coins. So I might as well get SR tickets as well. So then I could use them on the SR transfer. So then the SR transfer, maybe I get lucky and get an SSR card, either for boundary break or for a skill. And then if not, with all those SR cards, I could use them in the SR pot transfer. I'm sorry, in the SR mixer, and then pull those, get an SSR, and then blah, 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 you see? So you're just maximizing your resources uh, based on the free stuff that they give you, okay? The online metal, well, you're not missing out on too much now from what they give us, you know? What was good about it before is that you got to, you know, increase your metal, I'm sorry, your your training items but now now like i said i have so many of these that i don't really care about stocking up on these anymore the only thing i wanted them for was for and it sucks that they did this they had introduced these these right here the exchange medals on these so that you would have to exchange i forgot how many it costed but you know we would get at least one once a month we would get one now this is for the first time ever they decided to give us player specific ones instead which is cool but it sucks at the same time because it's like fifty thousand. wow that's a lot so you have to be playing a lot of online just to be able to claim them and not only that well these two players are not 
specific players that I have on my squad. So I just have them there for in the future in case my my team takes a different shape or form later on. You know. So online, you're mostly playing for fun, of course. Not for the online medal rewards that you're going to get here. Um, yeah. The league medals right here, you know, it'll have some usable items that you could use. In the meantime, like some of these, I think, are like this one right now is used a lot from the anniversary players. So if you didn't have like enough of these, but for some reason you had a lot of leagues. So play your leagues, guys. Play your leagues. Play your leagues. Your leagues are automatic. You do it in autoplay. It does not matter whether you win or lose at this time. Just play them, play them, play them. Trust me that your team, as weak as it might be, you could find teams that you could win on and at least make it to like league rank C or something. And that'll give you rewards along the way, including increased dream balls and stuff like that that you could benefit from. And also, there's also uh, free missions and stuff like that where you get dream balls and stuff like that based on the amount of league matches that you have played and the amount of league matches that you have won. So play them, 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 okay? Especially as a new player, play them, play them. These club medals will become handy later on once you join a club so you could get some more skip tickets. These I don't really care for anymore, but I used to look forward to them every month so that I could increase them by 10. Now it's just unnecessary for me. I would have probably claimed some right here, but because the event shop is giving me some right there, I'm not going to use them. I'm not going to need them. So yay. And I think that's it. Oh, yeah, almost, almost. Let's go over some of the missions. I think we've already gone over the daily missions and stuff like that. Right now, it's just regular. This is the standard play two league matches, and then this changes all the time. Either train a player or use a friendly transfer or clear a weekly match. It's usually the cycle that it uh, swaps from. Then after that, you get your one dream ball. The weekly ones will usually consist of, well, you could click on the tab. The things that makes the weekly one the hardest to complete, but the most rewarding in terms of the fact that you get at least five dream balls from it is that you have to at least play one online match. So go ahead and play an online match, even if you have to just leave the game playing on its own, let the game play on its own. Who cares if you lose? Because right now you're a beginner or you can mess around just to kind of see why it's important to kind of wait around a little bit before you start pulling for powerful players. Maybe get a glimpse of what it's like to play online by seeing how other players play against you just to at least complete your weekly mission. So you could keep racking up those dream balls, all right? The free ones, you know, you're gonna get a whole bunch of different missions along the way. You're not gonna see a lot of them here because again, I've been playing it for so long. 1,776 days to be exact. Actually longer than that because this was a reroll account that I started like three months after I started my main account. When I made several mistakes. That's why I started over. So, you know, you're going to see a whole bunch of different stuff, especially because you're new. You're going to have access to a whole bunch of different stuff that is going to increase your dream balls exponentially. So, save up dream balls, gather them, gather them, gather them. I became addicted to saving up dream balls and gathering them. You should too. Save them. Event missions will come from time to time. Lately, they've been increasing them. A lot of times they will consist of enhancing special skills a certain amount of times. Completing like random stuff, you know. Uh, the golden generation is what the event is. Usually you have to do like at least 10 of those. And then the regular ones. The one where I showed you the Roberto's tips is where you get the, the materials to level up your players. This is where you get coins. This is where you get the materials for the the skill. Uh, the stat tree, right? Skill, skilled field enhancement. And then consume energy. Usually 2,500 is the max. Then you have friendly transfer, train a player 10 times. Keep in mind that train a player 10 times doesn't mean train 10 players. When you train a player, every one material counts as training the player once. So if you train one player to max, usually that will be enough to cover this right here. I could even show you. Right here is a shortcut. You could click on that and it's going to take you to your training. Right now I have it set up for only SR, SSR players to be shown here. As you can see, obviously I have a whole bunch, but that's because of the fact that I have been playing this game for a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. Been talking nonstop without a drink. Hold on.
Miss some water. Jeez. Ah, of course, it's empty. Not prepared. Okay. So, uh, let's just level up uh, this guy. Why not? Okay. So, I'm going to do this. Oop. No, I don't want to do that. Let's say I did the... Oh, yeah. A little shortcut or hack in case you're limited on materials. This is a green player. So you want to use this right here. Usually for SSR cards right here, four is the max. That's all you need, four. Okay, four is the max. We already got him to the max level. Go there. If you wanted to enhance this one. Now the thing with this one is that in terms of the, the stats, you're going to require a lot. In terms of the booklets, you only need seven of the UR booklets. Right here, because I clicked on max, seven is overkill in a sense. So that's why you're using the lesser materials right there. But as you can see, obviously I'm using way more than 10 materials here. I'm only uh, training one player, not 10 players. I'm not gonna do that right now. I don't wanna use up my items. So not 10 players, 10 times. And I didn't go in and train them once, come out. Train them again, train them again, come out. Train them again, come out. No. No, I did not do that. Train player one time, train player 10 times. Bada bing, bada boom. All right? Okay, now maybe, maybe the last thing I'm going to show you then. Hopefully. Because we've gone over chess players and everything. Remember I was telling you about getting those bronze medals. You could get a lot of those bronze medals when you're doing the try-hard version. Remember I told you that you could complete certain scenarios or whatever. Like let's say because you're at a low level, or a low rank, I should say. You're not going to have that much energy right here. There's going to be times where you're going to come across some events where you need to burn through a lot of stamina to clear out those event missions. But unfortunately, there's only one event and that one event is only giving us like two or 30. You're only using up 10 or 30 of your energy max. And it's going to take you forever to get to 2,500. Not only that, but you don't have that much energy as it is. Again, as you're going back and forth through an event and through a story like that to slowly increase your rank, slowly but surely, you're going to come across these as well. This one costs 30, the harder one costs 45. When you complete these, especially the more advanced ones right here, you see the teams are not that strong. So you should be able to clear them with relative ease on autoplay. And most often you're gonna get some of these right here as drops. Sure, you can use some of these cards as filler just to get yourself a full UR team. In the meantime, just for whatever, you could also boundary break these players, but when you boundary break these players to level four, you do not get a Manabu token because they are not, these are event specific cards. So you do not get a Manabu, but at least you get something to toy with and it does count towards the free missions where some of them require you to boundary break up to level four, a certain amount of players, not a certain types of players, just certain amounts of players. So there's missions for like let's say boundary break 10 players up to level one, 10 players up to level two, 10 players up to level three, 10 players up to level four. So when you do this, let's say you do 10 event player cards and you level all of those 10 to boundary break four, you would have completed missions for all of those, the 10 at level one, the 10 at level two, the 10 at level three, the 10 at level four. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. And also, once you do that, sell them, sell them. Get the bronze medals that you're gonna get from. You're gonna get like 50 or 30 or something like that so that you have enough then to get those, uh, what's it called, the formations and stuff like that in the meantime. And uh, yeah, yeah, no. Little by little, you'll be into the world of Captain Sabasa Dream Team. And I think that's it for this. I can't believe that it took me an hour and a half. Jeez. An hour and a half to explain all of this stuff. And this isn't even the whole thing. Like I mentioned, you know, this is what now part four. And each one has been almost like about an hour or so. <laughs> so, uh, you know, 
I think we finally reached the end of this video. I think at some point, I th well, I think I covered already team building, you know, in the sense that you're going to have to look to see what is it that the game throws at you, what is it that the game gives you through pulls. I've already given you advice as to, like, when to pull, when not to pull. I've already given you advice on, like, uh, what to look out for and stuff like that. So, if you see anything in any of these four videos that you don't understand, perhaps I missed, I didn't cover it. Cause I forgot or I missed it or whatever. I could have sworn I went through my outline and you know I thought I covered everything. Maybe there's something I missed, forgot, whatever. Let me know, yeah? Let me know. What else do I need? What else? Oh, well, there's a uniform and stuff like that. Oh man. When you're here, there's times where you could get official kits. But also, you have the opportunity. You could get through it. As you're clearing the story mode, you're going to be unlocking different kits and stuff like that. So you have access to that. When events happen, some of them will offer kits like in the Valentine's one. That's right. You see this Christmas, Christmas, Japan National Team 2017. I almost feel like wearing one of these kits just to show off online how long I've been playing this game. For. I might do that because that's from... The first World Cup, I believe, no? No, 2018 was the first World Cup. And this one was before that, from some of the first Samurais that were released. I think the very first Blue Samurais, and I have access to that kit. So maybe I might tote it around a little bit. A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Let's do it or not. Or maybe for whenever I play away, because at the moment I have the home team, the official Mexico one, and the away team, the official Mexico one. Let's see. Uh, okay. Full kits. And then later on, you get the opportunity also to purchase some of these kits. A lot of these, again, through the stories and stuff like that, you start unlocking them. This one was gifted away through the anniversary, or I think I had to buy it through free Dream Boss, perhaps. This one as well was through anniversary. Um, some of them, though, are from paid dream balls but most of them just require one paid dream ball if you saw the prices i told you when to buy when not to buy okay one paid dream ball for my mexico lindo y querido is not a bad deal for me because well i wanted to wear it so and it didn't cost me a dollar it cost me a dollar for five of them so it cost me 20 cents all right i'm down with that 20 cents mm. The Halloween ones are usually free. The Mexico one I purchased. You know, that's the one I'm wearing. So there's all kinds of stuff here and there. Hmm. Wow. Oh, you know what? I probably changed it somewhere else. That's funny. Because this isn't even the most recent one, but I think I like that one more than this one. Uh, well, when I first started, when I first started the game, you also have the opportunity to customize your own kits, by the way. Okay. The customization is somewhat limited, but, you know, early on, there were a lot of people that had some creative kits. Maybe you want to do that instead. Maybe. You see, there's all kinds of different options. Unfortunately, they did not release any additional options. Even know what I'm changing here. And the color. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, you could do that. You could design the shorts and socks too. You know, different colors and whatnot. So you know less options but there's options you want to do that but previously i used that to basically create this because there was no mexico official uh kit yet so i guess i'll do that you know what let me do that <clears throat> i'm gonna do that you guys inspired me you guys inspired me to show that i'm old school that 
I'm not gonna change my goalkeeper one though, I'll tell you that. I kinda like that white one though. Hmm. Nah, I'm not a big fan of that white one right there, TBH. TBH. The other white one I kind of am, but you know what? I'm gonna keep my green one. Why not? Let's go. Okay. So, and then your goalkeeper also has customization options, you know, for the shirt shock. Oh, shocks. I had the shocks. You know, you get different ones unlocked as you go through the story mode, and then later on, same same deal. You could purchase some. Some of them are gifted, etc. I would have used the Mexico national team and stuff like that. I kind of like the black kit right here. But this one will always and forever be my outfit because of the inspiration behind it in Jorge Campos, which is absolutely my favorite goalkeeper of all time. I love the kids. I love watching him as a kid. And so he's my goalkeeper and I'm sticking to it. All right. So there you go. I think finally, finally, this is the end before I drag on. Once again, if there's anything else, I know I probably didn't even go over some of this. Uh, you could, you know, do this full auto, per, for instance. Just because you do full auto doesn't mean it's going to give you the best combination of players. Like right here, my 11 is dependent on Schneider for sure to activate the 1-2 and the shot. So I cannot use them there. But you're going to have your times so that you're going to want to do a full auto. Select the best players for the current formation. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. I had never used members, and this is actually a usable team. So if you already decided on the type of formation that you want to use, like this, then you could do... Uh, I never used that. Wow, I should have been using it. Just because, look. Okay. That's formidable. However, I did notice the flaw right here. Remember this one right here? It needs two blue skill type players to activate the bond. So, not usable for me. It does not take things like that into consideration. So, keep that in mind. Uh, this one, of course, formation to change it. Uh, in the auto pick, aside from that, if you want to do easy picks, so like, let's say, okay, well, I just want to do uh, non-Japanese players. And do just European players, Japan uh, Japanese players. Most of the time, you'll probably mess with this more for uh, events and stuff like that when you need something specific for like a rate up or boost up or whatever copy in case like let's say i have like uh i had an empty formation somewhere or whatever i'm like okay well i kind of work with this as a base that's what i did at first when i had this one right i had this one as my base and then i copied it to the other one where i had an empty slot because i wanted to um well replace that natureza this one right here with the new red one that i had but I wanted to change the base so that I could um, not change the base, but copy the formation and copy the entirety of it. Exactly the squad that I had. So I could just make adjustments from there instead of starting from scratch. So that's how I did it. So keep that in mind when you do that. These you could change. You could change what you want to call them. Just click on it and change it and blah, blah, blah. So um, the reason why I say that is because if you change it or if you don't, deck two, deck three, whatever. And let's say you know that deck two is the empty one. When you go to copy, I'm going to tell you where do you want to copy it to. Okay, so then you have to select and then it'll take you. Do you want to do that? I'm not going to do it this time, but that's what you can do. And then if you're like, okay, no, nah, this isn't going to work for me. This was a test or like, you know what? I want to start. I'm going to abandon this idea after all. Let me just go here. Let me reset it. And it's going to set all my players to reserves and then I'll have... Uh, an opportunity to mess with this as well okay your reserve so that when you're setting up your players you go here you click there you just want to look at all your ur players just to see what you have usually well at least not for me i'm going to want to do my transfer exclusive transfer exclusive meaning that are the ones that i'm pulling from the banners and stuff like that right but if you don't care about that you want to use all because there's going to be some cases where you might use a chess player here or there then you know you might want to be able to see them on your field then you just hold it and grab it and then just drag them out to place them on the field and then that's it and that's it that's how you do it that's how you do it looks like we finally got through everything i already did the uniform you could check from here the bond and everything if there's something that's not activated this will be blacked out or not blacked out but it'll be like flashing and it'll be in gray like this you know like showing you like nah not call you're missing something dog and then 
Uh, this one just shows you like, okay, let me see. Do I need to enhance something somewhere? What's going on? Let me see. Uh huh. Okay, whatever. Do I need to enhance something? Whatever. Uh, oh yeah. When you're not clicking on anything, you click on here. You change your squad. When you click on your player, it shows you their stats and their skills. And you click on that to see their hidden abilities. Anything as well, like always, click on it and hold it, right? You want to change the captain or the number, you click on the number up here in the top left. He's already the captain, so that's why it's not allowing me to appoint him. You could change it. Why not? Seven. Oh, it's already in use. No, no. All right. You could do that. I can appoint captain. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave him as captain. And okay. I think that's it. Finally. 140 now. Wow. If you made it all this way, well, thank you, first of all. Second, I hope that you find this information useful. I know that it's so much, so much, I know. But, you know, I felt that I try to give you as much information as possible, as much information as you might need. I try to, I guess, anticipate questions that you might have in hopes that I would be able to answer them. I try to provide you with as many examples as possible so that you're not left guessing as to like, wait, where did he press? Wait, let me rewind. Where did he go? What does he do? I didn't know there was a shortcut. He didn't say that and blah, blah, blah. You know, stuff like that. So I try to be as detailed as possible. I hope I covered everything. If there's anything, I hope it'll make some big significant change that would make this entire guide useless because again i did not expect to be making four separate videos or series that are over an hour or long to be able to provide you all the information could i make it shorter maybe i don't know i would have to go through a lot of edits and a lot of cuts and be like oh do i want this in there no okay blah 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 but no i'm gonna give it to you raw and unedited well for the most part i think there's i don't think I came across a situation, maybe like a minor cough here and there, but I don't think anything that will disrupt the video. So hopefully I can just go ahead, just go ahead and add the intro, the outro, output it, take forever to upload it, create the thumbnail and blah, 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 put it out there and done. Because the first time I did the beginners guide, it was incomplete because I cut off. I spent a long time to shorten it. And I think the amount of time that I spent on it was not worth it because I was thinking, oh, I think the beginner's guide is too long. Nobody's going to watch and it's probably going to be too much info and blah, 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 blah. So I spent all this time cutting off useless info, cutting off stuff that uh, well, I was like, uh, mm, uh, we're probably spending a little too much time thinking or whatever. And all it did was shave off maybe like 15 minutes or so after all of total time. And it was like, man, I put in way too much work in here that I should have. And it took me about a month or so of getting the energy to try and get there and sit through all of that just to look for perfectionists. You know, I like I don't want to be a perfectionist. I don't want to be a perfectionist because then I'm just going to I'm already I'm already stressing myself out just trying to do everything. And I, even though I said this is the end of the beginner's guide, now that I think about it, I still haven't gone over the settings, uh, the options or whatever. I haven't gone through gameplay videos yet. So I guess this is not the end. This is the end for me now, though. I just need to take a little break. There's been a lot of recording that I'm doing. and I still have to edit it and upload and everything. I do want to do that. And before it gets too late, I want to. I've been holding on to these Pokemon cards and stuff like that that I've been wanting to record on. So I want to do that. I want to open up. Well, that one's probably gonna take me forever to upload too but you know i still want to open them start putting them in my binder all over it and rearrange them so anyway before i continue on the changing again and make this two hours long thank you very much for the support for the kind words for the comments for everything that you guys have uh done for me everything that you guys have said to me everything that you know all the positivity and everything that has been sent my way i really do appreciate that a lot i hope that this information helps you out um and hopefully you don't feel too overwhelmed i want to say that i'm here to help you because i am but at the same time you know please i apologize please be patient with me please bear with me if i don't respond right away as i mentioned there's a lot of things that i'm dealing with and there's a lot of things that i'm trying to do and you know once i start getting overwhelmed i'm like i can't do everything then i shut down and then i don't do anything at all and i don't want that to happen okay so i appreciate your patience and i ask you to please as always practice kindness Let's be respectful and let's be responsible. Let's show compassion. Let's be empathetic. 
let's try and be understanding of one another you know let's make this world a better place i know that life is beautiful it is there's a lot of beautiful things in this life there's a lot of beautiful things that you know we can accomplish together so let's try and do that all right with much love take care of yourself and each other with peace to the next one 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 and by the way the bass line on this track is awesome i think i've said it before but still peace